Hey folks, Ryan Adams here, and in this live stream I want to share with you three reasons why you might not be losing weight right now, despite following a plant-based diet, and you heard from every YouTuber, every plant-based doctor under the sun, that this was amazing for the old waistline, this was amazing for your health and well-being, but right now you're not seeing results, you're scratching your head thinking, what am I doing wrong? Maybe you know what you're doing wrong, and you're here to try and confront that and fix that. By the way, hopefully we can touch on some really important action steps for you today. Number one is, the first reason why you're not losing weight on a plant-based diet, you're a junk food addict. You're still a junk food addict, man, right? A plant-based diet ain't gonna save you from this. It ain't gonna fix this necessarily, right? If you're living in the Western world, you know, and we have access to the food we have access to now and food manufacturers, you know, very intentionally designing food with the right balance between sugar and fats and chemicals and additives to get us hooked, to get us hooked. And you are not helping yourself by trapping yourself in this cycle of keeping these junk foods familiar as well. These highly refined sugar filled, these refined sugar filled, excuse me, very fatty junk foods, oily, you know, as I say, all the chemicals and the nasties thrown in as well, right? Food manufacturers know exactly what they're doing to us. They know exactly what we're doing. And we can point our finger at them and we can, we can wag our old finger at them and you know, uh, argue that they're being uneth unethical all day long, but we're the ones putting food into our mouths. And we're the ones that need to take responsibility and, and people making junk food ain't going to change anytime soon, right? Uh, and you don't want to be such an irresponsible person that you wait for that to happen. You need to take accountability for this to yourself and you need to say, yeah, okay, everyone around me is eating junk food. I live in a society that thrives on junk food. Consumerism has gone nuts with food product, but I'm the person that's putting the ice cream in my mouth every single night, right? You have to take that responsibility. So you're still a junk food addict, right? You know about plant-based eating. Maybe you're doing it Monday to Friday. Maybe you're doing it two or three meals a day even. And actually 80% of your diet is decent, but it's that final 20% that is so rich, is so calorific, is so void of fiber, utter junk, that it's just taking you over your calorie totals for the day and it's just stopping weight loss. Or worse yet, you might be eating more healthy food than ever before but you're actually gaining right, weight right now because that addiction to junk food is just being fueled and fueled and fueled and you are trapped in this perpetual cycle where you cannot get junk food out of your mind it feels so highly tasty potent addictive to you because you're eating it so often and this is I think my first tip on how to get over these kinds of addictions or afflictions with junk food we well, obviously you need to stop eating them right that's the obvious bottom line but what you are doing by still eating them, even if it's only from time to time and not actually abstaining altogether, is you are reminding everything biochemically inside you, but also, also psychologically, also in terms of the psyche, you are reminding yourself that you are the person that is weak to that food and that you enjoy that food and you are maintaining that association in your mind with certain feelings and certain environments and junk food, whether it's popcorn at the movie theater, bang, that's an association that people have, eating cake on your birthday, bang, or a any birthday, any excuse to eat cake, right, bang, cookies on a Friday at work, someone brings in cookies or donuts, bang, these are such strong associations turning to food when you're bored or stressed these things when you combine them with junk food right people don't have these bad eating habits habits with oranges or potatoes nine times out of ten right it's potent junk food and again food manufacturers have very well taken advantage of this and they know human behavior incredibly well but you're the person feeding the beast you're feeding the machine right and your familiarity and repetition of doing this is only making it harder for you because it's just this inevitable script that follows and you are tricking yourself, and you very well know better than this, when you calmly analyze, I'm not saying anything is pr particularly profound here, this is rocket science, but when you calmly analyze, you know very well that ice cream isn't the solution to you being stressed. You know very well that that cake ain't good for you, okay? This is obvious stuff. It's not like that doesn't actually occur to you in the moment. You're not a high, a, a low IQ being, I'm sure, right, watching my channel here, I like to think you guys are all on the ball with this stuff. You're all very self-aware people. You know what's happening. You know the trick. But that's the illusion in the moment. Everything in your body, from your gut bacteria to your brain chemistry to your psyche is screaming at you that you need that burger or you deserve that cookie as a reward or a pick-me-up or that it's not really a celebration. Christmas coming up, right? It's not really Christmas without mince pies, is it? So I'm going to have my little mince pie, right? This is something 
that people build through patterns, habits, established behavior routines. And it's actually quite incredible. When you ask junk food eaters what they actually enjoy about junk food, it's very rarely to do with taste. When they look beneath the surface, it's more about habit and familiarity and perception of comfort. And they just go for the same couple of junk foods. It's this particular pizza they like from Domino's and no other pizza is what they really go for. It has to be with me back in my student days. I always tell this story. No other form of ice cream would do. It had to be Ben and Jerry's cookie dough. Nothing else would hit the spot. Every time I wanted to emotionally eat, I went to Ben and Jerry's cookie dough, right? It wasn't about taste. There's all these different types of ice cream. If it was about flavor and taste and the experience of what something tasted like on my palate, I wouldn't have just stuck to the same thing day in, day out, right? When I wanted to eat or week in, week out when I wanted to have that ice cream, okay? It's more about familiarity. It's about routine because routine is safe to us. So if you are resonating with this as you're watching this, and this is the thing holding you back from plant-based weight loss success, you can't actually fully follow a plant-based diet. There's still lots of junk food in your diet. You're not eating all that many whole foods. You need to realize right now that you being flexible with it, I talked about this in one of my live streams last week, you fudging those boundaries and trying to squeeze these things into your diet and rationalizing you know, those mistakes a couple of times a week with junk food, you can't tolerate that anymore because it's keeping you hooked. And you need a period of abstinence. Now, I know I sound like, might sound like some sort of perfectionist Puritan person. My comment, my clients, excuse me, I invite them to comment down below if they're watching this. My clients will attest to this. They don't need to be perfect. 24 seven to get results. I let my clients eat out once in a while. I forgive them for little mistakes with junk food once in a while in the same way that I forgive myself for mistakes occasionally with junk food. It happens, right? We're all human. We still get cravings. Even though I'm slim now, I still get cravings. That still happens. It's not as much as before, admittedly, and I'm stronger. I feel stronger in combating them than year, 10 years ago, admittedly, but I still get cravings. They still exist for me and they still tempt me from time to time. Okay. That's not the mistake. The mistake is not getting back on the wagon right after you've made a mistake and the, the old slippery slope starting and all your your diet just you know slowly or very rapidly you know goes by the wayside so what was i saying and, and so sorry yeah my the point i was originally making my clients will attest to this you don't need to be perfect all the time you know with your nutrition you know to get amazing health results but initially if you are a junk food addict if you have big weakness for certain junk foods, you might need to abstain for the next couple of months to get over them, to take them off that pedestal, to allow your brain to break off those associations and those sort of deeply led um, connections between the synapses and the neuro pathways that send the data around the brain that associate certain feelings and moods and events and activities with certain junk foods. You need time away from indulging in those behaviors to get over them and to create new stories and new psychological associations for yourself. So that's my first um, that's my first reason here why you're not losing weight on a plant-based diet. You're still a junk food addict, man, and a plant-based diet ain't going to save you. Yeah, okay, we're eating some really, really good, tasty whole foods. They are nourishing. You can feel fully in this way. There's lots of fiber in this diet. Will that solve some of your emotional eating? Perhaps, but not all of it. Will it solve some of uh, all, rather, of, of that sort of you know, that sort of, you know, temptation that consumerist culture waves in our face now, you know, our friends drinking beers, our buddies drinking beers and waving pizza in front of us, asking us, you know, to have a slice of cake with them. You know, are you really, just because you're eating whole foods, you really think that that is particularly connected to your discipline in those challenging moments? It's not, it's not, it's really not. So plant-based diet, as I always say, it's not a magic pill. It changed a lot for me. And it did help with my cravings, but boy, oh boy, it didn't cure them. It doesn't automatically fix your relationship with food. The second reason why you're not losing weight on a plot based diet, I'm not being rude here, folks. I just got my notes on my phone for this to give me some kind of structure. Otherwise, I just do this. So we're already 10 minutes in. I meant to spend about three minutes on each point. I want to keep it like a 15 minute stream. We're already at the 10 minute mark. Bloody hell, classic right. Eh? Number two, you've got no. The second reason why you're not losing weight on a plot based diet is because, frankly, brutally put, you've got no respect for calorie density. No respect for calorie density, and you are not acknowledging that calories still matter, even though you're on a plant-based diet. And I don't know if this is because you watched a couple of YouTubers that said you don't need to count calories or worry about your calories, or this is something you've uh, told yourself, or, or you got so sick of counting calories like I used to in the past that you just can't, can't be bothered with the very idea of even comprehending calories. Well, sad reality check for you if I'm in a position to give it. 
calories still matter. <laughs> calories still matter from a weight loss perspective. And yes, when you eat lots of whole foods that have a low calorie density anyway, and they're quite self-limiting because of all their fiber and bulk, well, you can make the argument that counting calories isn't as essential. And I still don't count my calories, by the way. I don't have any of my clients count my calories. So count their calories, excuse me. Um, so that's not my solution to this problem. But my solution to this problem, unawareness and lack of respect of caloric density is simply to be more calorie conscious. It doesn't mean you have to track everything because I don't. But there's a lot of you watching this right now. You are literally putting foods into your onto your plate every day. And the only criteria you have for that food selection is, is it plant food? Is it healthy? Is it vegan? And that's it. And that's it. And look, if you lose weight doing that, if you're losing one to two pounds a week without having to even worry about calories or macronutrients or do too much caring about portion sizes, you can literally just say, oh, there's a cool recipe on YouTube. I'll try that. And then you do that. And, oh, I'll eat a bit of this. Or, oh, what's in my cupboard? I'll just throw this together. And it's literally that casual for you. And you go back for seconds when you want them. And it is that intuitive. And you are losing weight. Fair enough. But you're probably not here on my channel if that is the case for you, looking for answers to lose weight because it would be working for you, right? So the reality is that uh, I think a lot of people, especially if they, if they have like over 50 or 60 pounds to lose, when they first go plant-based, they can literally just eat plants, as the saying goes, and they will lose weight fairly automatically, fairly magically, but it won't happen forever. They might get to the 10, 15 pound mark and then boom, it stops and they're scratching their head thinking, but I'm doing everything the YouTubers say. I'm I'm just eating plants, right? I'm not having my oil and I'm sticking to the whole fruits and I'm keeping the fat relatively low. Why aren't I losing weight? Because calories still matter. And it's still possible. It's harder, but it's still possible to overeat on whole foods. It is. So that's what I want to challenge you with right now. I don't need you to track your calories and measure your portions and that sort of thing. That's not what I have my clients do because I make a meal plan where the calories are all taken care of for them. So they can just eat and it's like, it's, it's fairly automatic. They can have the peace of mind that, well, Ryan's designed this for me. I know it's going to put me in a sensible calorie deficit for me. It's tailored and customized to my needs. So I can just relax, chill out. And I still have to be careful with, you know, how much food I'm using and follow Ryan's meal plan. But I don't actually have to get out chronometer on my fitness pal. That's really nice for people. But you at home, you don't even need to become a client of mine to get that benefit. But you do need to understand a little bit more about cal caloric density. And if you're not losing weight right now, I want you to examine your diet that you deem as being very healthy right now. Let's say you are really consistent. You're not a junk food addict like I talked about in the first part of this video. You are being really consistent. You're following a whole foods plant-based diet, scratching your head thinking, why am I not losing weight with a very clean diet? I want you to examine your diet right now from a calorie perspective. Maybe it's worth tracking your calories, not permanently, as I say, but just for maybe two or three days. And it could be incredibly illuminating. You might be like, oh, I didn't know I was eating 500 calories a day of bananas. There's nothing wrong with bananas. They're a very weight loss friendly food, but 500 calories a day of bananas, that's quite a big contribution. Maybe I could do tomorrow, I'll do three bananas, and then I'll do the rest of my fruits gonna be melon or berries or citrus fruits because they have a lower caloric density versus bananas. So I can still eat lots of fruit, but just by changing that little tweak, that tiny tweak that doesn't really leave you any more hungry because you're actually replacing the bananas with very rich, with very tasty water rich fruits that add bulk to your digestive system. Well, it's a, that's a plateau hack without even you know going hungry or feeling deprived or anything like that because you're just replacing so little tweaks obviously like it requires you know maybe i'm making it sound very straightforward there is like an intermediate to advanced nutrition knowledge that's required to just do the plateau hack for example that i ran through oh lose the bananas do berries like most people watching this no offense don't want to sound condescending most people watching this they don't have that level of knowledge to whereby they can sort of substitute and tweak their diet like that. But that's where occasionally using chronometer or my fitness pal, not daily, but every now and again, if you're not losing weight right now, it can be really helpful because you start looking at stuff, you're like, oh, darn, I'm eating like 300 calories worth of peanut butter every day. And that doesn't mean you can't ever eat peanut butter again. That's not what I'm saying. But 300 calories a day gone to peanut butter. Is there anything else I could do here? Could I throw PB2 into my smoothie instead of, um, uh, full peanut, full fat peanut butter. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe that would save me, you know, 50 calories at breakfast, 100 calories at breakfast. Oh, do I really need, can I just do hummus on my toast for my snack instead of peanut butter on toast? That might save me 50 calories, et cetera, et cetera. So you get the idea. Respecting caloric density, understanding it a little bit more, playing with the volume and calorie amounts of your meals. And you'll realize that weight loss is actually really, really easy, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> still going to be challenging, but it's, I, I should say it like this, because maybe I'm selling a pipe dream there. It's much easier than I think a lot of people think when you start understanding volume eating and that there are lots of low calorie density foods out there that you can fill up in big bowls and big plates so you can feel really nice and full and satisfied and you haven't actually consumed that many calories. And you can only start learning about this stuff once you've understood this basic idea of calorie density. So that's a fundamental. Um, the third and final reason why you might not be losing weight right now on a plant-based diet is because you're not doing any exercise. It's all about the nutrition. We've heard this a million times, not just in the plant-based community, but this extends across the different diet methodologies as, uh, as well. You know, generally, the, the consensus in the mainstream health world when it comes to weight loss is, um, is well, I've lost my train of thought entirely, is, oh, yeah, it's all about the nutrition. It's 100% nutrition. And it's not true whatsoever. It's not true whatsoever. To be fair, you hear some people say, oh, it's more like 80, 20. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you get people saying, oh, it's 50, 50. It's 50% nutrition, 50% exercise, which is way overplaying the role of exercise. But I think the point I'm trying to make here is that exercise still counts. It burns calories in of itself, but also it boosts metabolic rate. So there's two very direct benefits that it could have, have every single day that will make it easier for you to actually be in a calorie deficit, speeding up the old metabolism in layperson's terms, not quite the scientifically correct way of looking at, it. let's say making the uh, metabolic rate more efficient, but also then burning extra calories through that movement. That's going to make it easier for you to be in a calorie deficit. You aren't going to have to drive your calorie intake, your food so low if you're doing a bit of exercise exercise because it kind of compensates and it gives you a bit a little bit more wiggle room as well in your diet so there's a very direct advantage of doing exercise to get you in a calorie deficit but also there's an indirect one when you do exercise i don't know about you at home when i do exercise which i like to do consistently as many of you know if you've been following me for a while i'm pretty hooked on exercise it was all it was always a food problem for me exercise since i was a young kid has, has always been a breeze for me thankfully it was only ever a food issue for me so i love exercise and i'm really consistent with it but in the times where i drop off with exercise because i'm really busy or i get sick one reason or another um i don't feel as good man i don't feel as good i don't have that endorphin release i don't have the positive neurotransmitters flying around I don't have that outlet stress relief that's really regular and common for me. And that's way more likely to make me make, excuse me, worse food choices. It's much harder for me to make healthier choices when I'm not doing exercise because I'm not in as good a mood, right? It improves my mood and focus as a person every single day to be doing regular activity. Not every single day I have my rest days, but to be moving in some capacity, even if it's gently every single day and not just sitting on this chair all day long, that does me so well. It improves my mood so much that it's easier to stay consistent with my nutrition. So by both directly in terms of the calorie contribution of exercise, in terms of the improvement to metabolic rate, um, you know, exercise has an, a, a really important impact on your weight loss efforts, but also then indirectly, because psychologically, the person that it makes you, the mood boosting benefits, the focus that it allows you, all of these things, I think, can have a decent to, to very strong influence over your day-to-day decision-making in, in terms of health and habits. So I think exercise is seriously, seriously neglected sometimes in corners of you know, the, the, the weight loss game and, and specifically the plant-based world, you know, we are, we are so busy talking about nutrition. We're so busy debunking protein myths um, and talking about calcium and talking about how to get X, Y, Z in your diet on a plant-based diet, because that's what plant-based diet content looks like online, right? We're talking about plant-based diets because it's plant-based diet content. That's the methodology that we are choosing to follow. And so all the talk is about nutrition. I just want to tip the scales back in favor of exercise a little bit here and just stress what a role they do play in terms of weight loss. So if that scale isn't budging for you and you're eating really, clean, really cleanly right now, look, bottom line, it's a calorie issue. So maybe you could take 100 calories off your daily diet and you might start losing. But you could also achieve the same thing through exercise. You could do an extra couple of thousand steps every single day or five times a week. And it's incredible what a difference that alone will make whilst keeping your food exactly the same. So exercise can be really beneficial for weight loss. Let's not underestimate that. Let's not neglect that. So that's it, folks. Hopefully some decent tips here. Those are the three or those are the three reasons I wanted to share with you today. There's a long old list, but three of the common reasons that I'm seeing at the moment as to why 
you guys when I'm interacting with you online, when I'm talking to my clients about their stories before joining my program. These are uh, three of the common things that I'm seeing pretty often right now as to getting in people's way and to becoming barriers to actually losing weight with this incredible nutrition approach that's changed my life so much. And I had my own wobbles and struggles and things that I needed to figure out along the way. So hopefully um, you can learn a little bit from my journey here. That's why I do what I do. If you want a detailed roadmap to get to your ideal healthy body weight on a plant-based diet, the big announcement that I just mentioned on my Instagram now half an hour ago is that my new, and I am genuinely really excited about this because it's been ages since years since I've released an ebook, but my new plant-based diet weight loss blueprint is now live. So in the link down below in the description box, you can learn a little bit more about this new ebook of mine, the new plant-based weight loss blueprint. And this is the exact formula that I've used to help nearly now 200, I think it's slightly over 250 now of vegans and plant-based dieters lose at least 20 pounds on my Slim and Sustain program. It's not the same as coaching with me where you're personally working with me and I'm holding you accountable, holding your hand step-by-step step through the process of losing weight. It's not the same as a coaching program. This is do it yourself. This is just a guide that you can implement for yourself, but we cover everything there. I debunk common plant-based weight loss myths. Um, I talk about, or I give you rather a seven-day sample meal plan for both men and women there's a 12-week exercise program there we just talked about the role of exercise that you can follow along and start implementing to make it easier to lose weight to make your results faster and more efficient on the scale um what else we talk about troubleshooting tips how to get through plateaus trial and error little testing tweaks that you might need to overcome the obstacles that come your way with this process we talk about my thoughts on bread recommendations oil there um healthy foods that you might actually need to avoid despite them being widely recognized as healthy foods it's a concise but still a very comprehensive guide that shares everything you need to know to lose weight on a plant-based diet so you can get that i'll link that as i say it would be the first link in the description box down below and i'm really excited to hear all the feedback for that that was hard work putting that that whole thing together and and making it i forgot what it's like writing a book even even if it's a short ebook it's um it, it is hard work and it is very draining but I, I think uh, when I start getting some feedback through from you guys, I think it's all going to be worth it. So I'm excited for that. Uh, so yeah, check that out in the link down below, as I say. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next stream here. Okay, take care now.